All right, so let's introduce our guest. Mike Matthews is an author with over a million books sold, and he is the founder of Legion Athletics, a supplements company. Mike is a self-made millionaire. He started off like an average Joe working a day job. He got in shape, wanted to write the book he wished he had starting off in the gym. He wrote it on nights and weekends, and it became a success in the Kindle store. He used the success to create a supplements company that he always wanted. He's been disrupting the supplements industry with no proprietary formulas, an actually good formula. Relations. He's sharp, inspirational, and a walking encyclopedia of information. Welcome to the Twitch show, Tomination Time. Mike, how are you doing? Wow. Well, uh, hopefully I can live up to the very pretentious intro that you gave me there. I like it. <laughs> He's very humble, too. Like, Self, super humble self-made gorillionaire is what I <laughs> Guru, yeah, the gorillionaire. That's the best part. But like, he's, he's legitimately evidence-based. And it's God, that's such a marketing buzzword these days. Like when I people know. say, oh, science-backed and, and evidence-based. And l- let's just start there. How do we know who's actually science-based and evidence-based? Like how do you kind of sift through that bullshit now? Because, you know, when you guys first started year, a couple years ago, it, it was relatively new to like legitimately be, you know, science-based. But yep. you guys are, are – how, are how are you different from everyone else? It's a good question. That's actually um – <laughs> from the perspective of running my business and building my business and, and, and the branding itself, this is a discussion that I'm having. I'm working on a rebrand, uh, kind of redesign of, of Legion's overall look and feel. We're starting with the visuals and working with an agency. We're starting with the visuals, new logo, new product design, something more gender neutral, something that appeals more to women. Um, because right now, a lot of women see Legion. They're like, oh, it's for dudes. It's not for me. That's actually not the case. But, but that's a good point because it's something that uh, the next phase of it's going to be we're moving over into the messaging. And that's the exact point that I've brought up is that when I started Legion, there weren't many supplement companies that were riding hard on the, on the science-based side of things, even saying things like clinically effective doses. And I had to explain what that was in the beginning. A lot of customers, a lot of potential customers, they'd never even heard of that. And now everybody says it. And so while Legion is a bit uniquely positioned in that it's been around for a bit now, it's, you know, this is year six, I believe, and I'm behind it. And then I have uh, a good reputation uh, due to the books that I've written and the articles I write in the podcast and so forth. If you're someone who comes across Legion, not knowing about me, not knowing about uh, that Legion was one of the first companies to to really push for real science-based formulations, it kind of just looks and sounds like everybody else, and that's not good. So I would say um, while there are major differences, they're not as apparent now as they were, and that's going to be on me to do a better job showing how we really walk the walk. And I have some cool ideas that I'm not going to share just yet because uh, I'll let my competitors copy me once they've uh, once once they're already out there. But um, the what what sets us apart is really what still nothing has changed in that regard. It's just I need to do a better job showing it and communicating it now because I sound at this point, I think Legion sounds like a lot of these other companies. And so uh, the first thing is it still comes down to spending. We spend a lot more on our products on average than than other supplement companies, which means our margins are lower, which means, for example, that I can't work with wholesalers or distributors. The the margins are not there. That's one of the reasons why my stuff is not in any retail stores and may never be. I may be able to work out a deal with some retail deals, but it's going to be, there's going to be no middleman because there's no margins for the middleman. And the retailer and I are going to have to accept lower than average margins, which I'm okay with. And it would be on the retailer to decide if they're okay with that. And so, you know, my, my cost of goods from a business perspective, is about double what it should be. It should be from a business perspective, probably, I don't know, 30 to 40%. And it rides at like 60%. Um, So business people, they hear that and they barf. They go, what a terrible business. Like, why are you even bothering doing what you're doing? And um, my rebuttal to that is that, well, one, it allows you to make good products and that matters to me. And two, it, I can make the business work because I'll, I can pr- bring a lot of people and a lot of customers to it. I don't have to spend as much uh, in advertising and marketing as my competitors. And so I'm kind of leveraging maybe my own 
you know, celebrity, so to speak, uh, to, to, to build the business. And so there's that. And then you take those, those budgets, um, the, the increased cost of goods. And I work with smart people who know a lot more about supplementation than I do to make these formulations. So we were talking about examine earlier. Curtis Frank is the co-founder of examine. He was the lead researcher and writer. He produced most of the technical stuff that you find on examine was researched and written by him. He has been my lead formulator since the beginning. In the beginning, he worked uh, behind the scenes. He didn't want people to know um, simply because of his work with examine, it's not that he was doing anything wrong or unethical or if people examine, they knew that he does do work for supplement companies, but he didn't want to publicly endorse any supplement company. But then over time, he just came to like what I was doing with Legion. And he saw that I really stood behind, you know, that he would make me a formulation and I wouldn't just gut it and be like, oh yeah, no, get rid of all that. We just want to spend like $5 a bottle. You know, for example, when we launched uh, triumph, our multivitamin, I think it cost us like $18 a bottle to make. That's ridiculous. Um, and, but go look at the formulation. You'll see why now we've been able to bring that cost down just be, through economies of scale, but it's still a very expensive product for us to make. So, so Curtis came to appreciate working with me because he would make, you know, here it is. Here's the multivitamin that I would love to take myself. This is Curtis. And we actually made it. So now, he- yeah, I, that, that triumph. I love triumph. It's one of my, like, it's, it's a very impressive formulation. I like, it was one of the, one of the products that I love to tell people about, like, Hey, you're going to try it right there. Triumph right there. Hashtag sponsored <laughs> by the way, but it's one of my five favorite five because it's just, you, it's so hard to find a good, uh, multivitamin that's well formulated. It's got the right types of minerals, right? Not zinc oxide, but a different, uh, mineral form than just the oxide because oxide is the worst, uh, bioavailability. And you guys created it. I, I love it. I love Triumph. Same, same. And it's actually going to get better because what we're doing right now is Curtis is, I believe he's done with the men's. So Triumph is going to become a multivitamin for men. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the, some of the extras, some of the goodies. We're going to take a couple out because he likes, I mean, it's always a, there's a, a, you know, there's the the cost and the benefits associated. We can't just go forever. So in weighing in terms of there are certain things he definitely wants to keep in. And I agree with, and there are a couple of things he's like, we could take these things out and put these other things in that are even better. And in, in, in a few cases are kind of male specific. And then we're going to create a female specific female only multivitamin, which is going to be great because then it's the dosages of the vitamins and the minerals. Those are going to change because now you're talking about probably on average people that weigh half of, of the, your average man who's going to, who's going to be taking somewhere around half, uh, who's going to be taking it. And then there's, there are some cool female specific things that are going to go into the women's multivitamin. So, um, can, can you give us a spoiler alert for any of those female specific things? Cause I've heard critics say that like, Oh, female multivitamins, men and women, they're pretty much the same. It's those differences are, are too minor. What say you? Well, I mean, there's the, there, we'd start with the vitamins in the, in the minerals, the dosages uh, should be generally lower. And in the women's, for example, it's going to include iron. We're not going to include iron in the, in the men's. So there are a couple other minor changes to the, to the vitamins and minerals like that. And then in terms of the specifics, um, there's one in particular, it's, it's Vitex something I'd have to Google it's Vitex. I'm, I'm watching the stream. I thought you were talking. <laughs> um, and it, and it, it, uh, can, can help reduce, uh, PMS symptoms, cramping. So that's an interesting one. And there are a couple others as well that, um, are, are just good for, for female health, reproductive health. And again, the formulation is not done yet. So I don't want to, I don't want to say too much, but, um, I'm excited for it just because, from a marketing perspective, specificity is always better. And also from a product perspective, I think in this case, specificity actually will make for a better product mm. as opposed to just like fake bullshit specificity of saying like pre-workout right. for women, pre-workout for men. Like, nah, that's, that's really yeah. just marketing. But in this case, know, the formulations are going to be appreciated different. Yeah. I've seen a lot of, uh, in, in my opinion, predatory marketing where they try to market it between men and women. And I've had, I've had some of my viewers on Twitch ask me about, okay, Hey Tom, you know, I saw this one for women. What do you think? And I actually look at him like, holy shit, this is complete bullshit. They're just like, they're just marking yeah. up the price and, and lowering, making the dosages worse. Yeah. And putting some pink on the packaging or something. Exactly. That's the, the pink, the pink tax, right? So, uh, I've had, but I've like, had, I've had, uh, at least one woman accused me of that on Amazon because the women's book was selling for more than the men's. 
And uh, I was like, no, I actually don't control the prices. Amazon controls the prices. So you can write <laughs> Jeff at Amazon.com if you want to uh, <laughs> rage against the Amazon patriarchy, but, or maybe, <laughs> maybe there's not a conspiracy in everything. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm one to, I understand conspiracies exist, but come on. But yeah. I mean, I'm in the back end going, yeah, yeah. Women can just pay more because, uh, <laughs> cause they're weak. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, where else am I going to take my keyboard warrior instincts out on? I got to fight something, you know, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to fight against you and, and your anyway. So <laughs> we're going to go too, too deep down that rabbit hole. But in terms of supplements company, like when, whenever I see a supplements company try to like do that predatory marketing, to me, that's a red flag. And of course, it, 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 yeah, if they use a bunch of buzzwords, for example, just go to another company like so that, that alone. We, yeah, right. So like when we start vetting companies, like let's say someone wants to vet Legion, even though we all know like Legion is the best supplements company out there and yeah. anybody who disagrees, mods ban them. But uh, if if someone wants to vet you, like who's this Mike Matthews guy? He's got two first names. How do I trust this guy? Or Legion. How do they start like when you see a supplements company, how do you start vetting them? What are red flags? What are, what are good, you know, good signs of a good supplements company? Uh, red flags. Anytime that uh, a supplement company is talking about something as revolutionary, uh, they are bullshitting you, period. Supplements are not revolutionary. They will never be revolutionary. They are supplementary by definition. Even creatine, the best, as far as body composition goes, probably the best supplement you can take is not revolutionary. Uh, it can help you gain muscle and strength. Uh, faster over over a longer period of time. So that's one thing. Any sort of marketing hype around that, whether it's a revolutionary formulation, a revolutionary ingredient, uh, a revolutionary delivery method, you know, where you have these pills that have like seven layers and they have little balls in them and liquid and uh, yeah, no. Liposomal. Li liposomal is hot too. Li liposomal pills. Uh, yeah, what is, I, I think I actually, I think my wife was giving me some of some liposomal vitamin C and I was like, whatever, whatever vitamin C we have, just, just give it to me so I can take, take my gram an, an hour and hope that I get over my cold, maybe like one day faster or something. Um, so, so yeah, so, so the, the more hyped up the marketing is the bigger, the red flag, um, that, that also kind of gets into buzzwords, right? So the more buzzwords that they use, uh, the, the bigger, the red flag. And I understand from a marketing copywriting perspective, you need a little bit of that. Um, but you know, when you get into, when you get into ingredients, for example, where ingredients are, are, are being, um, uh, uh, delivered with, with a whole bunch of buzzwords and hype, that's, that's a red flag. If they overuse brand names, like if they push like all of our, all of our ingredients are, we have the branded carnison beta alanine, we have the branded this and the branded that again, it's just marketing hype. And I actually appreciate it as a marketer. I'm like, yeah, that's smart actually, but it doesn't really mean anything. It's the, the, the branded, the reason why I use branded beta alanine is so carnison uh, the company that owns that patent which is strange that you can patent a molecule but you can and so they don't sue me <laughs> that's the only reason that i use it they're nice people uh the people i've dealt with they, they're all cool but really that's what right currently that's 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 the that's what they have they have a patent and if you're big enough and you're using unpatented beta alanine they will uh come after you and is that worth it Nah, eh, no, it's not. So that's another thing. Um, if they get into like naming their blends and their mixes all fancily, that's also a red flag. So, uh, you know, it's, I guess it's okay if, if you had something like a thyroid blend. Okay. I mean, using proprietary blends period, if they don't list the individual amounts of each ingredient is, is obviously a, that's a huge red flag. That's don't even buy anything from them. If it. If it's the, the super maximum pump matrix blend, and it just gives you the weight of the blend and then the ingredients, but doesn't tell you how much of each ingredient move on to another company. But if they have a blend and it gives you the, the, the weight of each ingredient in the blend, I'd say that's, that's okay. And it, it can be helpful actually, I think from a, from the perspective of educating a consumer. So if you're looking at a supplement facts panel, and it's just a bunch of ingredients and you don't know what any of that is. I, I could see how I might even do that just to allow the consumer to know like, oh, these are some things for this purpose. And these are some things for that purpose. As long as you're listing the amounts in each one, I, I don't do that in my products, but I actually can see 
how it might be helpful to some consumers to see that. So let's say it's the thyroid blend. Okay, that's not too bad. But if it's the anti-catabolic extreme thyroid cocktail, no, just no. The more the more of that stuff, the worse. Um, also, you know, there are a lot of herbs that that you'll find like in, let's say, um, testosterone boosters, right? Tribulus terrestris is in a lot of them. And so what supplement marketers will do is they'll, they'll hide behind herbs, but they won't give you the percentages of actives, which is really what you want. If you're taking uh, tribulus terrestris, which you shouldn't be if it's if you're trying to boost testosterone because it won't do it. But you you want to go for what are called saponins. That's that's the molecule you want. So and this there's a big difference here because you can get cheap herbs that are not standardized for key molecules, um, and and then people might hear that you know ashwagandha. They hear like oh ashwagandha is good, but they don't know that it's not just the ashwagandha that you want, right? There's a key molecule or the key molecules in ashwagandha that you want, and so. When you know, if you look at, at herbs in Triumph, for example, we list those actives. You know, five percent blah, two percent blah. So then, people who are inclined, they can do the math and they could run over to examine and see, like, hey, am I getting enough? You know, whatever the key molecule is to make a difference. So I'd say those are those are red flags. I mean, speaking of testosterone boosters, if they sell a testosterone booster. Um, I say a hormone booster at all, then they're, they're a bullshit company. That's another red flag. Mike, uh, I was just about to release my line of BCAs featuring testosterone. You're, you're, you're really ruining featuring, my groove here. Well, I mean, hey, hey, if you put <clears throat> pure testosterone in there, like testosterone <laughs> powder in the BCAs, then, you know, I don't know how, I don't know how, I don't actually know how well that's going to work because it, it needs to be injected, but at least that would be a little bit better than the feds uh, will come chance, after me. <laughs> there's a chance maybe it'll do something. Yeah. But, uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, the feds will come after you, but that doesn't matter. You'll make, you'll make enough money. And then what you do is you set aside a portion of that money for the, the fine that you will eventually get. And then you just pay the fine and then you move on and you just do it again. Yeah. yeah. Dude, this guy's a genius, marketing genius. But you know, speaking That's of That's the secret of getting rich. It's just, it's, <laughs> yeah. just, it's just corruption, fraud. Pretty much. Yeah. But, uh, the, one of the things I've, I've, I was thinking about just now when you mentioned this is one of my red flags is overextending on their claims. They're going too far on what the science says and they're extrapolating too much information and presenting as fact. There was this uh, one product review I was doing for, for my viewers on Twitch and it was um, Pulse versus, that's right, hashtag, hashtag sponsored guys right there, uh, picture of Pulse. But uh, it's Pulse versus this other pre-workout that shall not be named and I also just can't remember it. But uh, beta beta in right? That's how you say it, beta in. Uh, betaine, betaine, betaine. Uh, they were overextending on the claim and basically e extrapolating that it, it helps reduce homocysteine levels in a way that's going to be like it's going to protect your heart. And they were saying it in like a, almost a factual way. And I liked that Legion never even mentioned that because homocysteine is not. I think it's not conclusive at this point, right? About how it uh, betaine affects that and helps protect heart health. Yeah, and again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna credit, I'm gonna credit Curtis for a lot of those types of calls because I always run all copy by him. In some cases, I ask him. Uh, I mean, he'll he'll put together a first draft for me because again, I mean, this guy reviewed over forty thousand papers, like read the entire, studied forty thousand papers over the course of seven years at, uh, when he was working on the examine project. So he knows more about supplementation and, and biology than I ever will. I mean, is it like a pharma D level of understanding? So it's nice to have him to bounce these types of questions off of, because, you know, I, I might read, I might read even five papers and come to a conclusion. And he's like, Oh no, no, you need to read like 50. And then you'll understand that that's not right. So, so it's nice to have that where he, um, will, he's helping me. I'm, I'm working on a second edition of beyond bigger, leaner, stronger. He's helping. Uh, there's some stuff I want to, I want to put on quote unquote, superfoods, which I'm using that as like, I don't like that term. And so, but I like that term to bring people in and then say, okay, there are, there's no such thing as a superfood, but there are nutritious foods that are kind of neat because they also contain some unique molecules that do some extra neat things in the body, like the anthocyanins in blueberries, for example, makes blueberries already a good food. It's just a nutritious fruit to eat, 
but it's extra neat because of these pigmentation molecules that they have, right? So he's helping with that. He's just a great person to go to for, you know, hey, can you give me a quick rundown of what's actually legitimate on this? And what, uh, what would somebody like him who has, I would say, scientific integrity and who cares more about that than, than selling things um, to, to run all of those kind of questions by? Yeah. And, you know, just talking with you, it just, I see so much more about what's going on in the supplement space, stuff that I never thought I would understand or hear about. But can you walk us through what this, what it's like, the process of building a supplement from start to finish, from conception until it's actually like, okay, we can go purchase it now? Yeah. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to credit Curtis with this because this is more his process than mine. And it's rare that I can contribute. <laughs> anything that he hasn't already thought of. And I'd say it's even the case with Legion Scientific Advisory Board, which really is an advisory board. It's not just a marketing thing. Uh, there are many, many email threads where Curtis, he will be working on a formulation and he'll lay out, here's what I'm looking at. Here's my rationale behind these things. And they'll go back and forth. And because each of the people on the board have different backgrounds, it's kind of, it's good because they come, they come at things from, from different perspectives. But, um, anyways, so the process is starting with a purpose, right? So like, what is this thing supposed to do when you ingest it? And then there's a main mechanism of action or a main component. And Curtis is like, you know, in most supplements, it's one, two, maybe three things. These are the main things that are going to accomplish the purpose. And they're usually expensive, especially if you're going to dose them correctly. And so that, that forms the foundation, uh, of the, of the formulation. And then he looks to what else can help accomplish the purpose, but these are the supplementary supplements, so to speak. Um, and it could make the main components more effective, or it could just be, have an additive effect. Right. And so yeah. I mean, uh, from there it's, I think he then looks for anything that could synergize with the, with the main components and the secondary components or reduce side effects. And, and then it's just kind of troubleshooting. Um, that's, that's basically the process. Hmm. So that's very interesting to hear regarding like the, uh, I guess the the brighter side, the happier side, neutral side of building supplements. What about the dark side? I, I've heard occasional podcasts from you where you mentioned about stuff like Amazon sniping and, in you know, fake reviews. Can you give us some more stories and information about like the dark CD underworld and uh, of the, the supplement space stuff that the average consumer probably has no idea is going on behind the scenes in these wars. Uh, so we could start with formulation stuff. So I think a fair amount of people probably have heard about amino spiking by now, but if you haven't, it's a, a great way to make more money so you can buy more Lamborghinis and look cool on Instagram. Um, so what you do is you buy some cheap shit protein from China, which we get people reaching out to us probably every day or every other day offering this. And then what you do is you add um, a cheap amino acid that like glycine, for example, that's rich in nitrogen and tastes good because in order to claim that you have, let's say 20 grams of protein per scoop, uh, you don't have to actually, as far as the testing would go, you don't have to actually prove that you have 20 grams of protein per scoop. You just have to prove that you have the amount of nitrogen that you would expect from 20 grams of protein, because that's just how the testing works. So what uh, supplement uh, shysters figured out is, oh, so well, if we then, whey protein is expensive, for example, good whey protein is very expensive. So if we want to claim 20 grams of protein, why don't we just buy shit protein that has only 10 grams uh, per scoop? And then we'll add, well, instead of buying you know more protein, we're going to buy just some cheap amino acid that has a lot of nitrogen, like glycine, that also tastes good. It makes it even easier to flavor the thing. And we're going to add enough glycine to raise those nitrogen levels up to where they need to be. So if the FDA were testing our protein or a third-party lab were testing our protein, it would come back as, as uh, containing the, the, the level of nitrogen that you would expect from 20 grams of protein, we can cut our costs of goods by like, you know, maybe even 25% per bottle done. So that's how amino spiking came about. And there uh, were... 
there are, I think are fewer companies doing it now than several years ago, but there were some big companies doing it several years ago. I'm not going to say who, but I know f- like for a fact, for example, because my manufacturer was running a lot of product for a very large supplement company, but would not run their protein because they were amino spiking and they were insisting on it. Like they did not want real <laughs> protein. They wanted bullshit protein and my manufacturer wouldn't do it. So they had to go elsewhere for their protein. And so it still happens today though. The bigger, the bigger players like Optum Nutrition, for example, is, has, as far as I know, has always passed uh, third-party tests. It's, and then again, that's testing for nitrogen. But I, I, I do not think that they do that. I don't think they ever have done it. It's not in their interest. They are the 800-pound gorilla in the space, a billion plus dollars a year in revenue, I think at this point. They own the, the protein market completely. They are completely completely vertically integrated. If on ever did amino spike, that's stupid. Or if they were, so I really don't think that they, they were doing it and that they have done it. Um, and I mean, I buy my protein from Glanbia, which owns Optum Nutrition and that's how big they are. They have a complete monopoly on the, on the protein market, especially whey protein period. So, um, oh, wait, I thought you buy from uh dairy cows. I mean like the small dairy farms in Ireland, they own like the they, the they farms own them. in Ireland. They are. What? They own the farms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, those are those are Glanbia's farms. Uh, so you know that's it. And the conspiracy only is true, Mike. It is. It is a giant conspiracy this whole time. <laughs> the, the the way conspiracy. Um, no, it's great. It's, it's it's a great product. I mean, and I don't. It's just just there. If I want that protein, which is what I want, I have to get it from Glanbia. I don't even have another choice. It's not like I can go directly to these individual, you know, people out there who are not in the Glanbia family, so to speak. Um, so, 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 amino spiking is something that uh, that that happens. It still happens, especially smaller smaller companies like a company like mine, which is doing well, but in the scheme of things, is a small supplement company. I would have, I would be the the, the type of person that you, the consumer, should be suspicious of. We're kind of, you know, big enough to keep, to be known, but but not so big that I feel like I have a lot at stake. So if, if I'm caught, it, it could be a big scandal. Like if on were caught immunospiking, you could imagine it would be a big scandal. A lot of people would be talking about it because everyone knows about on, everyone uses their protein. Legion, not so much. Um, so that's, that's, and unfortunately it's hard to detect Tech, really? I mean, because again, if they're doing it right, they can even pass tests. So it more comes down to how much do you trust the company? Who's behind the company? That's also a thing. If you're buying from a supplement company, especially an Amazon supplement company, and you have no idea who's behind it, that's that's a red flag um, because you have a lot of supplements. There's a lot of money in supplements, especially on Amazon. If you know how to game Amazon correctly, um, I mean, I know one company that they're they're probably doing. I would say thirty to forty million a year on Amazon, and their stuff is garbage. They're just good Amazon marketers. They know what they're doing. And uh, the people behind it have literally nothing to do with fitness whatsoever. They could give a shit about fitness. Um, so there's also the question of who is formulating uh, the, the the products. I've been very open about that. Once Curtis, I mean, I used to say when Curtis I was under NDA. I could not say that Curtis was the one making my, my formulations. I didn't claim I was though. I said, look, I have somebody who's, I wish I could tell you who it is, but I understand he doesn't want to be publicly associated with any company because he wants to just remain independent because of his other work. But now that he is, um, now he is publicly the, the lead researcher and formulator at Legion. And then you have the scientific advisory board, which, uh, has, I, I think the, some of the premier people in the evidence-based space who have been in the space, who really, I think, built the evidence-based space and who have not been uh, associated with any supplement company previously. So that's also, that's something to, to, to look at. And um, because you have, again, what this is kind of gets into that, like, this is, if you want to have a supplement company, you can just go to a manufacturer and say, hey, I literally know nothing about supplements and I could give a shit. I don't want to read anything about anything. I just want a pre-workout that I can shill. And they go, yeah, no problem. Here's uh, here's an off the shelf pre-workout. It has this, this, this. You're like, I literally don't know what any of that means and I don't care. I'll take it. Uh, and there you go. Now you have a pre-workout and you just give it a name and you start going on Instagram and you hop in your Ferrari that you rented for the day and you drive around 
talking about your pre-workout and all now you're, you're on the way, you're on the way to, to making your fortune. And so, so if, again, with, with, with a supplement company, if you don't, if they don't talk about who came up with these products, assume the worst, assume that it's exactly that. Cause manufacturers do have shit formulations and I've never seen one that's good. I've never seen one off the shelf formulation. That's good because again, these formulations are not supposed to be good. They're supposed to be cheap. They're supposed to lure you in with margins. It's like, Hey, this is going to cost you. Yeah. This, <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's a better word. <laughs> um, so they're like, Hey, you know, this is going to, this is only going to cost you $6 a bottle and you can sell it to random Muppets for, for $50 a bottle. And then, and then, you know, the, 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 the imagination Dollar bill starts going. Yeah. And, um, anyways, so, so that's, so that's something to consider. And as far as, uh, uh, Amazon. Yeah. Amazon sniping is, am, I, it's, I'm a, I, I have a love hate relationship with Amazon. Amazon is great consumer, um, uh, but not so great as a seller. And this is something that they're getting better at. I'll give them that, but it is, uh, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, it is, um, so it's like, okay, just recently I, I had, 15,000 bottles of Pulse Fruit Punch at Amazon, right? And that was my number one best-selling product on Amazon. It was number one in scouts on Amazon. Um, I, I, what was the exact revenue? It was uh, it was a lot. It was thousands thousands of dollars a day in 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 sales. Wow. And um, and then it just goes down. One day we, we go, we show up at the office, and we're like, cool, Pulse Fruit Punch is is gone. Hmm, neat. And then we go look in the in the Back end and it and all fifteen thousand units are unfulfillable, just unfulfillable. That's, that's that's there's no reason, no information, just unfulfillable. Okay, contact Amazon. Nobody knows what's going on. Um, a couple of weeks. Let's just fast forward a couple of weeks. So now that's revenue not being made, right? And you don't just. It's not like you just. Oh, people just buy other uh, flavors instead. No, no, you're just out that money to some degree, at least half of it, right? Okay, cool. So not making that money. Uh, yeah, who needs that money? Who cares? Um, <laughs> and 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 then a couple of weeks go by, and now what they're saying is they've actually lost all of the units. Fifteen thousand units are just gone now, and nobody knows where they are. Not only do they not know why they were taken down, they're just gone. Oh, okay. A um, couple of weeks, we go back and forth. We have twenty-five cases open. A couple of weeks later, they've said, "Oh, actually, okay, we found about five thousand of those units, and here, here, you can have them back." But the others are gone. Oh, and we're not going to pay you for them. Um, oh, not only are they gone, we actually destroyed them. Is what happened. And but we're not going to pay you. We're not going to pay you for them because you had thirty days to uh, remove them from our warehouses from from the from the point of when they were marked unfulfillable. And per the agreement that you signed to sell on Amazon. If you do not do that, we can just destroy them, and we don't have to reimburse you. And of course, we're like, well, wait a minute. You didn't even know where they were. We, we we couldn't remove them from the warehouse even if we wanted to because we were trying to figure out what was going on and your people were telling us you didn't even know where they were. And they go, yeah, well, yeah, too bad. Um, <laughs> we're and, Amazon. We'll do what we please. Thank you. Basically. <laughs> yeah, basically. So so there's stuff like that that happens. And um, that that's a that's kind of an extreme case where now I'm out six figures. Uh, in in real cost, right? Not to mention all the money that I that we lost by you know that listing tanking, and it's coming back, and we'll get it back. But you know that's that's a major setback. So there's that. There's also um, seller on seller violence uh, warfare. Just because I'm not going to say exactly how to do it because I don't want to encourage anybody, but it is relatively easy to get people's products taken down uh, for investigations if you if you just kind of know how to game the system, and that's pretty common where you have sellers will pay people to do what you need to do to get products taken down. So we've been the target of those types of things, especially um, Pulse Fruit Punch has been a big target because it has been number one in pre-workouts for some time, or at least it was, and it's a moneymaker and blah, blah, blah. So that's the kind of stuff that happens. Tons of fake reviews on Amazon. Um, there's there's some websites now. I think Fake Spot is one. That yes, might be I, I use them often. They're, they're great. Yeah, yeah. Fake, fake Spot, spot right? Yep. yep. So, so it's not entirely accurate, but it's pretty good. 
um, I mean, it's going to say, it'll say some of Legion's reviews are fake and I don't know, I've never bought a review, so it's not entirely accurate. Like, and the reason, of course I would say that I never bought a review, but no, really the reason why I have never bought a review is if that's the one thing that can just get you banned. If you mess with Amazon's reviews and they find out, they probably will just ban you and you may or may not even get your account back. There was a company called Uber Vita that was doing at least 50 million a year on Amazon and they were going hard, hard, not just with, with fake reviews. I mean, they were like contacting people who left one star reviews and threatening to sue them if they didn't take their reviews down. They were, I mean, they were doing every black hat trick in the book you could imagine. 50 million plus though year in sales and Amazon did just finally ban them, just gone. And they had no, they, and there was no appeal and they, they, they made, Amazon made it clear, you will never sell on our marketplace ever again. So you can imagine that waking up from the having, you know, one day you, you have a business that does $4 million a month plus in sales with big profit margins because your products are literally garbage to just, you wake up and you, you have an email that you're gone and you're never, you're never coming back. Now, I know at least of one of the people behind Uber Vita and he has other Amazon scams and you just start another one. Scams and that's on. what, <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what that, that's part of that is, that is a strategy that people who are good at Amazon marketing and who have money because to, to do it well, to launch on Amazon and do well, if you don't have a real business and a real following, you just need money and you know what to do. So there are a lot of these people out there. What they do is they go hard in the beginning, they spend all the money to get all the fake reviews and do all the product giveaways so you can artificially raise your, your seller rankings and blah, blah, blah. They game Amazon's keyword algorithms by doing weird offsite black hat stuff. And yes, they know that they probably will get caught and banned. They do shady things to incentivize people to leave good, leave good reviews, but they don't care because they know that it's going to take, they, they figure they're, they can make at least a good run for a year. And let's say they're going to, they can do 10 to 15 million in sales with a big margin, even with Amazon's 15% off the top, they know that they're going to walk away with two, $3 million and Amazon's going to ban them. And then they'll just do it again. They have, they'll have another account spun up. They have accounts run through, uh, other people. So their names are never associated with it. And it's just a, literally a rinse and repeat scam. And so that's, that's what Amazon is dealing with right now. And they know about it. Uh, and they're doing their, 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 they're, they are working toward cleaning up their marketplace, but you know, it's just with this, with the marketplace being so open and with it being so easy to do what I just outlined, if you have money, and you know what you're doing. And now you have more and more people that are learning about how to do it and making enough money to self-perpetuate it. It's a problem. It's a problem. And so I'm, I'm, I, I'm either a sucker or I'm playing the long game. It's one or the other. We'll find out because <laughs> I'm not I'm not doing things that it, it makes me less competitive on Amazon because I'm not willing to just flagrantly violate Amazon's terms of service to just make more money and, and, and know that like, eh, if they catch me, they're going to ban me, but whatever, they're, they're probably not going to catch me. I could just do it that way, but I'm not. Mike, think of how many yachts you could have had by now. Well, but 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 uh, I want to go back to the way protein actually. Because... I, want, I, need, I need a jet before I need a yacht. <laughs> All right, so that's that's your price. Everybody has a price. Yeah, that's but true. Uh, I, I want to talk about the way protein um, for a second because you guys have a grass fed, cold process, undenatured whey protein from Ireland. The small you know small dairy farms, like as as premium as I can think of. Across Buzz, like checks, buzzwords. checks, everything, right? All these sexy buzzwords. But <laughs> some critics will say they'll say stuff like, "Bro, why are you getting spending so much money on whey protein? Just drink milk, bro. It's casein and whey." Like studies show, this study shows like you just drink milk, muscle protein synthesis improved. What say you? Yeah, I mean, it's not a, it's not an invalid point. I would say um, you have to drink a lot of milk though, and that's probably going to mess your stomach up. I wrote an article some time ago on the on the GoMad diet and. Uh, and it's a bad idea. It's just a bad idea. Also, milk comes with a lot of calories um, in the in the way of carbs and fat. So, milk and whey protein are definitely not the same if you're looking from a macronutritional standpoint, and also an easy on your stomach standpoint. So, like my protein is is a 100% whey isolate, so that means it's lactose free. And uh, we hear from people often who are surprised that 
my protein is the one that they've found that does not upset their stomachs and uh, where they've tried a bunch of other types of ways and one for one, even isolates upset their stomachs, whereas mine does not. And so um, that's one of the reasons why I would say I would choose a whey protein over a milk. Also, if you look at it for a gram per gram of protein, the cost is probably not that bad. It's going to be different. Milk is going to be cheaper, of course, but uh, the fact that you can get pure protein from from a powder and you can get it at a, at a pretty economic uh, price, I think uh, is, is good. Protein powders are more convenient. There's no question that you're not going to lug a, a gallon of milk around with you all day, <laughs> drive around, just drink sipping on it or something, right? It's a lot easier. Hey, hey, some bros will like, you just like instead of the, gallon, the gallon jug of like five gallon jug of water, five yep. gallon jug of milk. Got to get those gains. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, body, believe it up to a bodybuilder in his walking <laughs> around in his stringer, <laughs> his ziz, his ziz stringer. Um, <laughs> So, so, so yeah. And then, and then there's, and then there's uh, the, if we're talking about like comparing protein to protein, I would say the main reason why, and again, I was just kind of scratching my own itch in that the, the protein powder that we buy, you can, you just, the first time you try it, you know, it's higher. It mixes better. It tastes better. And then there's also the stomach factor too. If you have a sensitive stomach, chances are even if other way isolates upset your stomach, mine won't. And, uh, you can, you can just chalk that up to the quality of the dairy that it, uh, and that, that's why we went with this. So like we had a couple options. Um, when I was working, when we were creating the product, I was like, what's, you know, talking with Curtis and with the manufacturer saying, what's the best stuff out there period. And it was between this and stuff out of New Zealand and the stuff out of New Zealand was significantly more expensive, but I thought taste worse. It had a different taste. Um, it was probably better than just like your average run of the mill, uh, whey protein, but I liked the taste of this Irish better. So that's why we chose it. I mean, I like their whiskey, so they're, I'm sure they are doing it right with their milk too, but the, the grass must be doing, stuff, halo, halo effect must be doing everything. <laughs> the, uh, micro nutrition, like grass fed cows, grass fed meat, grass fed organ meat, grass fed, uh, whey protein, grass fed milk. It's all better micronutrition, but what is actually transferring over into the whey protein? Are we actually getting that better micros in the whey? And if yes, why aren't you guys putting a label? I want to know. I want to know how much vitamin K2 I'm getting from this. Uh, I'm going to say no, not, not in any, even, even if you, it's not that tremendous. Like, yeah, you get a little bit more omega-3 fatty acids and, and a few other things, but it doesn't, it's not gonna make a big difference unless like you're eating, unless you're like following the carnivore diet, then maybe it'll help a little bit. Um, so no, I, I wouldn't make any specific claims as to more micronutrition and grass fed is something that I'm even wary of. Uh, I, I, I don't think, I think I actually pulled it from the website and I generally don't talk about it in the copy because the reason why I don't like the claim is technically it doesn't mean very much. It just means that cows ate grass at least once in their lifetimes. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no standard. It's not like organic where at least that label, um, it does mean something. It does mean that a percentage of the ingredients are, are organic. Um, whereas grass fed could literally mean like the cow was given a, a blade of grass on his way to live the rest of his days in the, <laughs> in the, in the warehouse where he ate his, his brethren who was ground up, who were ground up and fed to him, like the, the feet and noses and eyeballs and stuff. So, uh, now in the case of where I'm getting the, the whey protein from the cows actually do spend a significant amount of each year out in grazing. And so they actually do eat, they're, they're as grass fed as you can get. Of course, when the weather gets bad, they have to bring them inside. And yes, that does make a difference. It does make a difference in terms of the cow's health, which, uh, and, and just nutrition in, in the cow, which then transfers into the meat and into the milk. But, um, again, coming back to the protein powder, I wouldn't say that it's, uh, it's going to be much more nutritious due to that. It, it, again, it may contribute to the, um, just the fact again, that, that the protein powder tastes better and tends to be easier on people's stomachs that could be contributing to that. But it's, I don't think due to like, oh, it's because, you know, these specific nutrients are more rich in the grass fed as opposed to the non grass fed. I see. 
Very good, very good. The next thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about substance a lot. I mean, honestly, a lot of it is just me getting my questions answered here. Good. Uh, guys, if you want, if you want to meet your like, um, what's the word? Uh, hero, your inspiration. The best thing to do is make your own platform and invite them on as a guest. That's you don't have to wait in line at, at fitness expos to meet these people. But uh, I'm not joking when I say that if it seems like I have composure right now. It's all acting because right now I'm just giddy like a little schoolgirl here getting uh, a chance to talk to you. And I, I say that because you seriously were one of you know, the biggest inspiration for me to start streaming on Twitch. Because I view this as this is a marketplace that no one's tapped into yet for the health and fitness stuff. No one's doing it right anyway. So I really wanted to, uh, to do something like that. And, and so I really want to pick your brain on the success and motivation and balance and stuff so often. We hear about the advice to chase your dreams, go be an entrepreneur, quit it all and risk it all. And I want to get your point of view on this stuff, but not just the positive bright side of like the meme, the memes that talk about, you know, go live your life and be your own man kind of stuff. But I want to hear also about how it's not all sunshine and glamour and just it can be really tough. So you're a successful guy. It's very easy to look at you. Purportedly. Purportedly. I heard somewhere. But um for every one Mike Matthews, how many other people have failed out there? How many other people who had the right idea, they had the right drive, the right work ethic? There could be hundreds or thousands of, thousands of them with the right temperament and skills, but they end up failing. Can you tell us about that? I mean, it's true. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know, though, if I would agree that they had recipe. I mean, there are some people out there who maybe had everything really unlucky sure but i'm going to speak from what i have seen i would say there are a lot of people out there who maybe they have a work ethic for example they they have the the hashtag hustle as uh, <laughs> as the kids say but but actually don't have the skill set they don't have like for example um I, I'll, I'll speak about the book market right when i published bigger leaner stronger back in 2012 there weren't any books like it at the time. That's one of the reasons why I did it. I was like, why has nobody just written a simple, straightforward, actually science-based book that doesn't bullshit people and overpromise and is much more about the steak than the sizzle? Just say, look, this is here how it works and just do these things and you will get results. You don't even have, I'm not asking for a leap of faith. Just do this for four weeks. Just do it and then you'll know. And then realize that if you do it for another four weeks, four months, four years, you're 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 done. You've reached your goal. It's really that simple. Now there are many, many BLS knockoffs that um, are all over, all over Amazon. Self-published knockoffs, uh, similar titles, similar content, similar color schemes. In some cases, people have put me as a co-author, and I have to contact Amazon because then it's it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like There's, actual co-author. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll that, say, that, oh, that, so and so, like their wow. fake name uh, with with uh, Michael Matthews, right? And so there's there's a lot of that stuff now, and none nobody has done well. I, I know because I keep an eye on the space, right? I mean, if we're talking about uh, if we're talking about supplementing, uh, I don't know if you can hear. Hopefully not in the back. It's not too loud, but uh, no, my audio is actually cutting out a little bit here and there occasionally. It's just I think it's having to cut out just the perfect time in which like there's background noise. So you're good. Oh, okay. You're good. So, anyway, <laughs> they'll, they'll be done soon. Um, so, so anyway, where nobody, nobody has, has, has any longevity, at least any of these knockoffs, right? If we're talking about, yeah, people have made a little bit of money. Yes, that's true. And so my point with that is, and I've, I, I have people that reach out to me regularly kind of asking, uh, either saying what you said or kind of asking questions along those lines. And if we're talking about books, it is, you have to really deliver some value. You have to look in the marketplace, research the marketplace and, and go, okay, what's something that I could contribute to this market? To, to, to What's something that's missing? What's something that there's clearly a desire for uh, that I could fulfill? And how do, you, how do you discover that? Well, you could start with reading, let's say probably the top 10, 15, maybe 20 best-selling books 
uh, in in the space and seeing what, what ideas come to you, looking at positive reviews, negative reviews, like doing the work that most people just don't want to do, right? And <clears throat> so I've seen I've seen um, a fair amount of a fair amount of that where it's like enough work ethic, uh, enough hustle to put up some books or create supplements or 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 do other things, but uh, not enough marketing chops uh, or not enough care to even deliver a good product. And then I've seen a lot of people do care to deliver a good product, but are very poor marketers. That's very common in this space. And that's that's just from a business perspective, an opportunity that I would always look for. If I were looking to get into something else, I would want to look for something where there's a lot of demand, there's a lot of competition, which means there's a lot of demand, but but where the marketing just is is soft, where I where I could see I could come in here and I can do a better job marketing than than the rest of you know the people I'd be competing against, <laughs> and so that's very common. I see where people, from a business perspective, many people they don't they're they're very bad at marketing, and and that that is a death sentence for business. It doesn't matter how good your product is or how good your service is, if you're not at least a good marketer, you don't have to be great. And in some ways, uh, I'd say I'm only good, and I can always get better. In some ways, I'm probably very good. Probably with writing copy is my strongest uh, marketing ability, and I'm and I'm like decent on other about on other things. I have good marketing sensibilities probably at this point because I've studied a lot of of marketing um, material, and I've been exposed to a lot of good and bad marketing. But that is one of the number one skills you can have. And really marketing, what that is, is it, it's, it comes down to persuasion. It comes down to, to sales on a broad scale, right? And a lot of people, they don't like to sell. Like that, it just turns them off. They want to just, you know, paint their paintings or write their books or make their widgets or gizmos, but they don't want to really learn how to sell them to people and they they think that if they just make a good gizmo or make a good painting or whatever that eventually people will find it and that's just not true at all the number one thing that outside of your of your technical skill which should be um I mean, if you really want to have a successful career, I think there should be something that you get so good at that other people can't ignore you right to steal from Steve Martin uh who Cal, Cal Newport also made that that Martinism uh, very popular with his book, So Good They Can't Ignore You. But it's just that concept of if you're working at something and you're not successful yet, the first thing you should assume is you are not good enough, period. So if you're working to write or if you're working, even if it's just to build a business, I'm talking about just selling things for a profit, which in the beginning didn't feel very appealing to me, but now I have appreciation for because of the art and science of business building. But if it's just selling things at a profit, right? And and you're not doing well, you should assume you're not good enough yet. And and really then what your business is, it is a marketing business. If your thing is kind of a commodity, if it's not some revolutionary thing, it is definitely you are just in the business of marketing. And if you're not doing well, it's probably because you're not a good enough marketer yet. And even if you do have something that's a bit special and brings is a bit innovative, you still are primarily in the business of marketing because it's just things are markets are too sophisticated now for for it to be that easy. You can't just have a thing that's special and just kind of like put it out there somewhere and think that, oh, that's going to be enough. Word of mouth is going to carry me to. It's if just you not. build it, they will come. Not. Yeah. Yeah. If, what, if you build other, it, maybe a person who will come. Yeah. What other reality checks do you have though for people who like, they want to go out and venture out? Like this yeah, is it. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to make the plunge. Yeah. Um, if you can't comfortably work at least 50 hours a week, and I mean, working 50 hours a week, not sitting at your computer 50 hours a week, half on Twitch, half on on work. Uh, I mean, Wait, actually, you're, you're discouraging my audience. Everyone, keep watching. Don't leave this channel ever. <laughs> uh, but no, if you can't work at least 50 hours a week, I would say don't do it. Um, unless, unless it's going to be again, if it's going to be a side thing, if it's like you have your day job and you do that, and just to make sure you have your bills covered, and then you have a what is really a hobby, 
and, I, and for me then if i were in that position i would be looking for a hobby that also is a bit fulfilling you know it'd be maybe something creative like for me it would be writing fiction so i'd write short stories on the side just because i think it'd be fun it's something i've always wanted to do and i can make a bit of money with it but if it's no no kill the day job uh, I want to go all in on, on, on being an entrepreneur. I'd say, again, if you, if you don't have the work ethic to work, be able to work at least 50 hours a week, and that's a low number, honestly, but I'm, I'm just going to say at least that, then don't do it. Just don't do it. And, and you know, I don't know. I, I've come across people who tell me that they say after 25 or 30 hours of work, I just mentally check out. It doesn't matter what I'm working on it, whether it's my thing or somebody else's thing. And I can't get it over that. Um, then do not try to be an entrepreneur. Do not work for yourself, in my opinion, um, unless you want to have a very hard time of it. If you are not able to consistently study, don't do it because you're going to get destroyed. I mean, if, you, if you're not consistently able to read, let's say, 20 to 30 pages of a book per day, especially in the beginning when you have so much to learn, I would not recommend trying to, to be an entrepreneur. Um, and uh, if you hate marketing and you hate selling and you're just stuck on that and you can't get over it, don't do it because again, it's going to be very, very hard to succeed. Um, if you are very bad with money and you live beyond your means and you hate saving and you hate thinking with numbers i wouldn't say don't do it but that's a again you're setting yourself up to have a very hard time of it um and if you're easily discouraged by setbacks when if things if you know if things don't go your way and you just like maybe you lose 15,000 products suddenly on Amazon, you're like <laughs> slight setback bottles, <laughs> bottles. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if that, if, if, if minor setbacks plunge you into the, into a depression, I would say I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't recommend it because things are always going to go wrong. Even when things are going right, always things that go wrong. I like in the being, a, being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur kind of like, Basically, everything is on fire all the time, and you just you just have to choose which fires are the, the really the problem ones and fix those, and which things are just going to probably burn forever. Um, and and that's and, and that's really true. Uh, I mean, I, I have whatever I have in terms of success and business building and whatever. But um, my my dad is a successful entrepreneur, so in, in a way, I actually didn't come from nothing, so to speak. I did grow up around entrepreneurial activities. I mean, he, his businesses are very different than mine, so. Um, it's not like he has been my mentor per se, but I, I at least did grow up like in a household where, um, it was, you know, the idea that working for yourself and being an entrepreneur, like, yeah, sure. You know, look, he's doing it kind of thing. Um, but through him, I've also met some very, very successful business people. And, and even they say it's very similar. Like I was speaking with a guy recently whose business got valued at, 800 and something million dollars. He just did a, a liquidation. No, I think it was just did a, 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 a round of funding actually. And it was a very similar, very similar as, you know, 700 employees. And there's a similar discussion where he's like, God, there are things are, there are so many things that annoy the shit out of me and so many things <laughs> that need to be fixed and that are better, that need to be better. And I, you know, this entire area, new customer acquisition, I tried hiring a CMO and he sucked. And so now I just do it like, I have to do it myself. And so, but from the outside, you might look at this guy and think like, oh, he's got, he's got his systems in, he's got everything down and his life must be so easy. No, absolutely not. Nobody uh, that, that would see that and think that would want to walk a week in that guy's shoes, uh, let alone, let alone years in his shoes. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's, that, that, that would be important. And I don't know, those are the, those are the main that, that, come to mind. And of course, that's me being negative. There are very right. positive, you know, we, we could talk about the other side of that coin. So it's not just all discouraging, but. But I, I've heard a lot of your content in on the, um, you know, the podcasting side is just, we, I mean, trust me when I say like, I think a lot of us, we hear too much of the positive encouragement stuff of to go do your own thing, take the plunge and not enough of the, whoa, whoa, pump the brakes, buddy. Did you, you know, did you, dot your I's and cross your T's kind of stuff. And also for, for lack of time, um, I do want to move this forward for a last, a last couple of questions. 
we, you and I both share this content creator drive to, we have a, like a, a purpose to create and make things digestible and educate, uh, a, a not disease. everyone. Yeah. A disease, a curse, if you will. Like we can't, <laughs> we can, like, we try scratching this content creation thing, but it's, it's just never enough. Must create more, but there's other people out it's, there. It's like an STD, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it spreads. You, does that mean Mike, you infected me? Am I, I feel closer now. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> but, uh, there's a lot of people out there who don't share that drive, that passion to like create content, to teach, to educate, but they're still sitting there lacking a purpose in their life. They feel like there, there is a void and a purpose. They don't want to be an entrepreneur. They don't want to create content. How do they find their purpose? What would you say to those people who haven't found their path yet? I would say, start with your, start with anything that just seems interesting. And this would be applicable to people who uh, maybe want to be an entrepreneur. You know, in some ways, I I don't really like running a business in some ways, or definitely aspects about it I don't enjoy. And a part of me would rather just sit and research and write books and have a simple. <laughs> that would be very that'd be very simple. And even as far as as money goes, ironically, I've made money from books than anything else. Uh, so you know, I, I could. Technically, I could just do that, and I wouldn't even need the the money that I make from Legion, uh, so to speak. Um, and so, I actually understand I understand that. But um, this would apply equally to people who want to be entrepreneurial or, or not. Start with something that is just curious that you're curious about, right? And because I don't believe in the whole follow your passion thing, I fell into what I'm doing now was not me following passion. It was actually just a curiosity. So growing up, I was a good student. I always enjoyed school. I enjoyed learning things and I would read outside of school and whatever. And so I got into writing because I was just like, eh, I, I, so I'm 18. I have no idea what to do. Um, and I, the idea of just having a business that sells things was very unsexy to me. It seemed, um, I, I wasn't interested in it at all. Again, I have more appreciation for that now because of my experiences building a business. And I think um, now I probably could just have a business that just sells things and, and enjoy it because there are a lot of aspects, a lot of creativity that goes into even just building a business that sells things, right? Um, but it, so I'm thinking then at that time, I, I was kind of like this, like, what am I, I don't have any like strong uh draw or I don't find any calling, uh, nothing specific that like, oh, I'm just going to go study that and do that. And so I was like, all right, well, I like reading. Um, I've always liked reading and studying. Maybe I'd like writing. It wasn't like, oh, writing's my thing. It was just maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe. And so uh, I wrote a novel, which I haven't read since. I'm sure it's terrible. I know it's terrible because after that, I then read a bunch of books on fiction, and I was like, "Wow, I didn't know anything." Um, I, I, you want to, you want to, you want to chime in? I know you do. No, no, no. It's just funny because like I can think of some of my cringeworthy stuff from middle school and high school that, like, I thought was so good. I was so excited. Like, this is, this has got to be gold. But like, looking back on it now, I, I'm afraid to even look at it. Like, I need therapy if I look at that. The trauma is going to come. I can't believe I wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's well. That's how. I mean, I, that, that that's actually stuff, just fitness stuff that I wrote a couple years ago. I'm like, I hate this, um, which, which is good, which means I'm getting better. Right. Um, so, right. so that's, that's how I found writing in the beginning and I came to enjoy it. I came to enjoy creative, even though I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning, I finished my novel. I don't know. It was 80,000 words or something. And I enjoyed the process. And so from there, um, I started studying about storytelling and fiction and I was like, shit, I should have done this previously because what I just wrote it needs to be completely rewritten or just deleted uh, altogether. But um, but I found that my interest was growing in it from doing it and studying about it. And I continued. And then I found my way into uh, creating. So in, in one of my dad's companies, I was started to build training. So it was writing, but it was a bit different. It was just how to breaking jobs down into 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 training materials. I did a good job on that and found that I enjoyed it because it was something I was good at. And I actually enjoyed the process of breaking things down and communicating them in a way that, you know, somebody could understand and, and apply. And then from there started doing that for other companies. And from there then went into fitness. And so again, that was a process of me just following a curiosity. And I would say to, to somebody who doesn't know what their passion is, who cares? That's not a problem. 
Now, to somebody who literally is not curious about anything, it can't think of a single thing that they want to know more about, or maybe get involved in in a little bit. That's that's a bigger problem. But even to that person, I would say, all right, cut out all forms of media consumption in your in your life. With and the exception of Twitch, everyone no no don't cut, change from here. Cut Twitch. Cut <laughs> no. Twitch. Unsubscribe. Well, Mike, all... the audio just cut out. Audio <laughs> just everything just fell apart. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Delete all your social media accounts. Stop playing video games. Stop looking at porn. Stop watching Netflix. Literally just get rid of everything. And I will I will bet you within uh, a month you're gonna feel like a new person, one, and you're actually gonna have some curiosity things that you're interested in. It could be the most random things. The amazing thing with the internet now is you can make money in the most random ways. You could get into like growing plants in, I don't know, trash cans could be your thing. And I promise you there's a market for that. You could make money with that. Um, it's, it, it really, you can with, with the internet, especially with Amazon, for example, it is a very a uh, low friction marketplace to enter and sell things. I, I have friends who they've done just that. Like I have a friend who got into gardening. He, he, he lives in Oregon now and he like has his own organic garden and he made a product um, that he uses himself and he sells on Amazon and he does quite well. And it came out of just him being interested in gardening, right? So um, you follow the curiosities and you eventually, I think, can turn curiosities into passions especially when you get good at it. Now, Cause let's be real. No one's going to be passionate about something that they suck at. It's just not, it's just not going to happen. You might, you might wish you were good at it, but that's, you're not going to feel passionate about like, I like piano, right? I like to listen to the piano. I can't play the piano. Uh, I, I may put some time into that. Not right now, but I may give it some time in the future, but I promise you, I'm not going to feel passionate about it in the beginning. It's going to suck because I'm going to suck. But if I got good at it, I'm sure that you know it, it. It could develop into something more than just a curiosity. So you know that would be, I think uh, that's the advice that I've taken myself and that used. Uh, I'm sure that I'm going to be involved in other things in my life in terms of work, and I'm, I, I do plan on branching out out of just health and fitness. And again, I will follow things, curiosities that um, I would I would give my time to whether. I made money with with it or not, and uh, and and again, I wouldn't be afraid of how silly it might sound. Whatever that thing is, there is a way to make money from it, almost certainly. And there may not you, you may not make a hundred million dollars from it, but who cares? Who needs a hundred million dollars? I mean, all you really need, if uh, you look at what there's research on this, right? That like at about eighty or ninety thousand dollars a year for most people is where money just it, it, it hits that point of diminishing returns, where additional income doesn't really make that big of a difference in your life in terms of satisfaction. I understand that doesn't that number is not going to apply to everybody. There are personal there is personal variability. Like, you know, if you're a single 22-year-old dude living in uh, Wichita, that that $90,000 is going to go a lot further than if you're a married dude with kids living in Manhattan. I understand that. But it, okay, double it then. It, it ranges from let's say a 90 to $180,000 a year, let's just say, depending on whatever you got going on. Beyond that, the extra money doesn't really do that much for you. It doesn't really matter anymore. So can the question is, can, can somebody figure out how to make that range of money with random, whatever random thing that they get into? I really do believe that uh, just through what I've experienced uh, with the internet. And so you, you mentioned about being productive and cutting out social media with the exception of Twitch, twitch.tv slash domination time. But because uh, that's the most that, important that, place. That's, yeah. yeah. That's where, that's where you go just to get re-energized for your next exactly. day. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, besides, you know, cutting out social media and stuff, what other tips do you have to say productive? Because you are so productive and you cram so much into your day. How can we glean some of that to our daily lives? Uh, mostly cocaine. That's, uh, that's really the key. <laughs> What would um, Scarface do? I ask myself that question every morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so I'd say for me, the, there is a struggle with having um, goals and having plans. So like I have a three to five year kind of set of goals and plans that I'm working on. So every day 
uh, I'm taking action toward a bigger picture. That definitely makes a difference, especially when I'm doing things in some cases that are not enjoyable at all. It's drudgery. And if I didn't have a, a, an idea of how this fits into a bigger picture, I may just be like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Um, so, so that helps. And then, and then from there kind of getting into the day to day, having a routine is, is, is huge. I know everybody says this, but it's true. It's just true. And, um, you know, even, even little specific parts of that routine, like start waking up early. If you're not right now, start doing it and your life will change because that'll mean that you have to start going to bed earlier, which means less worthless media consumption. And it, and you're not going to wake up early to go consume worthless media. You're going to do something productive with that time. Like for me, I wake up at six. That's what my alarm is. Sometimes I wake up a little bit earlier. Sometimes I have to sleep a little bit later, depending on how I slept the night before. But on average, I'm getting up at six and I have, a, I have an infrared sauna, which has a few benefits. I kind of just like it. It's nice. I go in the sauna and I read. That's the first thing I do. Um, until about seven and then I go to the gym and then do my workout and I'm at the office eight 30 or so eight 45. And so I've already started my day. I've already built up momentum. I'm in a good mood, which, uh, colors the rest of, of my day. I mean, that's something that research has shown, but you can just experience it for yourself that when you're in a better mood in the morning, your day just tends to go better and then, and then getting to work. Um, and, uh, so, you know, I'm working until probably seven on average, sometimes later, rarely, rarely sooner. And I don't, I, I eat my lunch at my desk. I'm really just, I'm pretty, pretty just one task to the next all day on the weekends. I do a bit of work in the mornings on Sunday. I do a bit more extra work. And so I have a very specific routine and even down, I have a schedule that I hear the things I'm doing every day. And I feel that that actually frees me up to be more productive because I don't have to think about what I'm going to be doing. I don't, I've already made the decision. I'm not going into each day with like a, maybe I'll do this today. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll go work out. Maybe I won't. Um, the more I think maybes you have in your, the, the, it's just the worse the quality of your life is. And I'll say that for myself too. I'm not just saying it's you. Like it's something though that I try to be as, uh, decisive as possible in general, because I find that if I'm not, if I'm stuck between, maybe I'll do this, maybe I won't, maybe I'll, you know, should do that. Maybe I should do this. It just tends to eat up energy and we only have so much mental energy and so much physical energy to bring to every day. Even, even if it's a much higher than average amount, it does have its limits. And so I don't want to be wasting any of that mental energy in particular on, on random decisions that I can just make. That's one of the reasons why I like meal planning. For example, I know what I'm going to eat every day, every meal. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to wonder what should I eat. I mean, research shows that the average person makes over 200 food decisions a day. Uh, and I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. That's such a waste of resources. And so having a routine is very important. And I would say, wake, start waking up early and start using that time productively, um, prioritizing what it is you're going to be doing each day. Read the book, The One Thing, um, which is, uh, I think a great book in a, in a, in a very overcrowded kind of, uh, cheesy chintzy genre, which is kind of self, the self-help. It's not just a workbook, it's not a self-help book, but it has some great advice. I stand by it. And, um, so having your priorities, like what are the key things that you need to get done today that are to contribute to that bigger picture and work on those things first, uh, managing, keeping in mind your, your energy. Most people are going to do their best work in the mornings, especially if it's creative work. And that's almost always the case. Again, just because your energy levels are highest in the mornings, I'd say for the rare person who finds that maybe their, their creative juices don't get flowing until later. Okay, fine. Then work that way. But for most people, it's going to be the mornings. So do your most important, most impactful work first and save the routine, the email and all the random stuff for later, the meeting, calls, save that stuff for later in the day. Um, that helps me and, um, uh, not you know, having I, any note. I, I want to comment on that really quick about the yeah. morning person thing. I, I used to think that I was a night person because I would hear people say like, Oh, you should start your day early. You should go to bed earlier and you do all your creative stuff in the morning. I was just a zombie all the time. Yep. Just I'm yep. dead. I can't function until I finally like took my sleep seriously and cleaned up my sleep hygiene. I did everything Dan Pardi said, P-A-R-D-I, for those who know, sleep, sleep, 
researcher. I almost said guru, but that's like a, that's a taboo word here, but, um, really smart sleep guy. And after I did that, I kid you not, I, I had the ability to just not need coffee anymore. I was up to like six to eight cups of coffee a day to Damn. function. And that was simply because I was being stupid about my sleep. I, I was not prioritizing it. After I did that, I was suddenly a morning person. And I don't think I, I really am a morning person or a night person. I just, I was just not, I was running on an empty, empty tank. That's what happened. Yeah. yeah sleep hygiene is huge, actually. I think that's uh, something that I've had to put more attention on because I used to be a complete robot with sleep. It was great. And then my sleep got worse where I would tend to wake up at night. And now, now I seem to, I guess the new normal is waking up once or twice at night. It just is what it is. So that means I do have to get in bed a little bit earlier. So I'm in, I make sure that I'm in bed eight hours each night. Whereas previously I would go to bed. Um, I'd probably be in bed six and a half to seven hours, but I'd fall asleep very quickly and I wouldn't wake up once. And, you know, I, I would, um, I tried a couple of different sleep apps. And so if I remember correctly, I was getting around four hours of deep sleep a night, three to four hours on six to seven hours in bed. So I was like, well, that's good. I guess I'm good. Um, but that's not the case now. And, but I've had to accept that it, it, it I don't like that. I need to go to bed an hour earlier, honestly, than, than before, because uh, at that time I was using, I was working, but even though I may not at this point, um, because now, I mean, I have two kids and so, you know, how the teen is, it's just by the time it takes, it's, there's food and then getting them into bed to help my wife as she puts the daughter to bed. I put the son to bed and then, you know, it might be nine o'clock by the time Sarah and I could even spend any time together. Um, and so, you know, maybe we have an hour or so before we go to bed. So, um, but, but yeah, sleep hygiene, sleep hygiene is huge. Prioritizing that, uh, you can get away with what you were doing until you can't, uh, until everything just starts falling apart basically. And, um, yeah, so, so those are, those are some key things for me, at least as far as productivity goes and just staying in the routine. It makes it so easy if you stay in, if you stay in the routine and you build up that momentum where it's like working out where there, you get the, you, yeah. you know, you get to, you get to that point where, you know, you are going to train tomorrow. Like the only way you're not in the gym tomorrow is if you're dead and you can get to that point with a lot of other things as well. If you just take the time to, to establish the habits and cause once that habit is established, then it, it becomes self-sustaining. And so I've kind of taken that approach with not just my work, but with the other things that I like to do, like, like studying, like reading, for example, it's very much a habit for me. It's very unlikely that I'm not going to be doing that tomorrow morning. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm learning German. So I put in time in that every day. It's very unlikely that I'm not going to be going through my flashcards today. And it's, it's, that's the unsexy truth really about any sort of accomplishment I think is a lot of it just comes down to grinding it out. It doesn't mean you don't, you don't enjoy it at all, but, uh, there is no such thing as overnight anything, right? It's, uh, there's no four hour anything. It's more like a <laughs> four year, the four year plan. How about that? I want, someone might be feeling attacked right now if they were here in chat, listening a certain author, but, um, you he's know, not here. I, I, yeah, I know. He's he's not, the, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not big enough. I'm not, uh, <laughs> he's his, in a, a yacht his, somewhere sleeping on some, some on his muscles. mushroom his mushroom coffee uh lying about something else that he <laughs> pretends to be an expert about yeah so you know that routine thing is so important because i feel the same like exercise lifting feels normal and it feels weird to not do like to go to bed without showering to go to bed without brushing my teeth it, it feels wrong and, and that's why i encourage a lot of my viewers to get to like if you can get to the point where what you're doing, something that's good for you, if it feels normal, that's such a good place to be. Like you've made it. That's it. You've you've built the habit. It's that's true. such a good win. It's true. Now, finally, Mike, um, where can people find you if they want to follow you? They like what they're the seeing. Streets. Hashtag exclamation mark legion. So go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> the streets. Uh, uh, hey, kids, you want to buy some? You want to buy some supplements? I got I got the, I got the good stuff over here. <laughs> out, out of the trunk of my Lamborghini, you know, in front of the car. Um, so, so yes, muscle for life is actually, that's, we're going to merge muscle soon. Legion. And the reason for that is muscle for life started. I started it really just as a blog. I didn't know if anybody was even going to care and it grew very quickly and it became popular and I've continued to write for it. And it has a ton of articles and a lot of traffic and followers, but it's poorly monetized in that it, it's a, we have a, we have a coaching service that does well and it has a store that does okay. But, um, I, I think it's a smarter 
move to just 301 to have Legion absorb all of Muscle for Life's content and all of its backlinks and everything and just make Legion my hub because it's easier to manage one property than two. I'll be able to put more content. It's just going to be better in a number of ways. So soon it's really just going to be Legion. Um, what I am going to be starting though is I'm going to start an economy line. Uh, it's going to be kind of Legion light, so to speak, because the number one um, objection that, that we hear at Legion is price. And I understand the products are not cheap. Um, and they're not cheap for me to make them. Like Genesis costs me seventeen dollars a bottle to make. Like, <laughs> what, what are you going to do with that? Yeah, and, and I think we sell it for forty. Um, and you know, for people that hear that and go, "Oh, that's a great, mar that's garbage, garbage margin, terrible." Business standards is a five times markup from cost to cost of production to cost to consumer. Five times is okay. So if I was selling, uh, if I'm selling Genesis for forty dollars, it should be eight dollars per bottle. My cost would be like okay, a business person would say, yeah, that's probably worth doing. But what you really want is eight times or greater. So what you really want is you want a five dollar bottle cost. Anyways, so. Um, going to be going to be just merging merging muscle for life into legion and it allow me to then just focus on on legion so that's going to be the hub uh going forward and we'll we'll you know bring we'll bring the coaching over it's going to be under legion's umbrella and we're going to bring all the meal plans we're gonna have everything that's life is just going to be uh, at legion we'll sell the books at legion and then we're going to do this economy line which is going to be uh the, all the same basically the same USP, the same underlying uh, premise of Legion, but the products are going to be cheaper. They're not going to be as good, but they're going to be better than any other. Let's say, let's say I think the pre-workout is going to probably be 20 or $25 a bottle. Is it going to be as good as Pulse? No, but it's going to be better than any other 20 or $25 bottle pre-workout. So that's going to be coming next year. Um, so if anybody wants to beat me to the punch, go for it. But uh, <laughs> there's there's the idea. Um, so so yeah, that's going to be coming, and then more books are coming, which which I'm excited about. I always that's some of the work that I enjoy the most. And I'm going to start publishing other people's stuff probably next year. I have a few projects of my own that I want to get through, and then it would make sense because there are a lot of other people in the space who have good content who just don't know anything about the book game. And um, so I'm excited about that. And new products for Legion, new flavors for it. Those are all cool things coming. Very excited. I, I'm excited for those flavors, man. S'mores, the protein Same. bars. Really looking for that, forward to that. So, all right, Mike, thank you for your time here today on the stream. And yeah, everyone, absolutely. go follow this band. Yeah, no problem. All right, Mike, have a good one. See ya. Okay, so that's stay on stay on with us for a little bit, Mike. Just wanted to have a nice clean cut for that in case for editing later we don't include that. Guys, we're gonna open it up to QA now. Um again, if you guys want to ask a question. Subscribers in the Discord will have priority. Uh, otherwise, toss it in the general, toss it in the Twitch chat. My mods are looking for it. We're going to grab a couple. And I need to um, move something down really quick to get, move this on to the next section. So uh, we were ignoring chat for a while. Now, Mike, it's, it's, uh, you can go ahead and open it back up. We can afford to be distracted by Twitch chat. So, um, one more thing I need to do, so we're just chatting. I have a question now. This is just my own selfish question because I, I just want to hear your thoughts. Um, in terms of like troubleshooting when someone can't lose weight and they 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 know like for sure they are tracking their calories, they are uh, weighing their food, they're being conservative on their calorie deficit. When I say conservative, I mean like they um, they're not. They're not being too overestimate on that, or not overestimate that kind of stuff too much. Where do you think, uh, how do you troubleshoot that? What are the troubleshooting steps for that, for weight loss? Well, I mean, first you got to check adherence, right? Because a lot of people would say those things, but that's not necessarily the case. And not that they're lying about it, that they don't realize that they're making mistakes. But, um, you know, they're also, it could be related to motivation sometimes have real set goals for themselves or a purpose as to why they're doing it. Sometimes it's negative self-talk. They can be very critical of themselves because they, you know, over eight by a hundred calories and then that can spiral out of control. Sometimes it's poor habits or lack of, of a set routine. These are all things that we look for. Um, when I say we, because, uh, I have 
although I have a coaching service, I myself don't coach people and I don't pretend to people know who they're being coached by, but as much as I would like to, it'd be fun. I, I can't, it, it doesn't, I can't justify giving it the time. I have too many other things that I need to do. Um, but, uh, so anyways, these are things that we look for. There can be external factors too, like not having familial support can be an issue. Inconsistent workout partners can be an issue you know, other things that are outside of their control, but do need to be addressed. And if all that is in, if adherence really is spot on, you know, if they're not making mistakes, measuring their calories, for example, that's pretty common where let's say someone takes a cup of oatmeal. Okay. They have another meal plan, a cup of oatmeal. And what they don't realize though, is that cup of oatmeal is assuming a certain number of grams of oatmeal, right? And they might be overshooting that by 20 or 30%. So bam, 20 or 30% extra calories right there of that, of that oatmeal. And then they do the same thing when it's like time for a tablespoon of peanut butter. It's not, it's not the, it's not the 20 gram tablespoon that they have in their meal plan, whether they realize it or not, that there is a, of course, a tablespoon is not a tablespoon is not a tablespoon. It depends how much is on that table. So instead of 20 grams, it's a 30 gram heaping tablespoon up. Oh, there's an extra 50% of calories of peanut butter. You repeat that mistake a number of times and voila, your, your calorie deficit is, is basically gone, right? So we go through these things and if that all that is in, then it actually is just time to increase the deficit, right? I mean, either that or they've been in a deficit for so long and their metabolism has adapted to the point where it's just like they can't eat, you know, let's say they're eating around BMR and they're exercising quite a bit that I wouldn't say, oh, just, just drop, drop below BMR. Let's just exercise more, uh, because there is a point where, all, where that then causes issues. So it might make more sense for that person to take a diet break, for example, just raise their calories back up to something around maintenance for a week or two, give themselves a break psychologically and emotionally, give their bodies a break physiologically, and then get back to it. Uh, but assuming that's not the case, it, it is time to just eat less food or move more. So I, I like, I advise people to move more if possible. Um, I, I, yes, if you are wanting to get really lean, there is a to reduce your calories from that starting point of your cut. But I would prefer people if they can increase activity as, as high as possible. And the general cutoff for, for, for me and what I recommend is let's say somewhere around five hours of resistance training per week. And maybe if they're going to do hit cardio, cause they want to maximize fat loss up to maybe two hours of hit per week. And if they're going to do low intensity, I recommend walking if, uh, as if they can walk enough to make a difference, walking is great. We were talking about this, you know, previously because it's very low impact. You're not going to be losing any muscle. You're not going to beat yourself up. And if you walk enough, you can burn a significant amount of calories. You can burn three to 400 calories per hour, maybe less if you're a very small person, uh, by walking just semi vigorously. And I know yeah, you do, yeah, you do a lot I, of right. walking when you cut. Yeah. Right? I have a treadmill desk and I do list cardio, low intensity state state, not, not like, you know, like my heart rate is really low. I can still talk just fine. And I have a treadmill desk, SMA smart treadmill, like 200 bucks. Get You can uh, configure it to make it a little landing strip and just walk real slow. Like yep. it, it really feels like I'm, I'm cheating when I, cause it doesn't feel that hard. It's like this, this, the secret to fat loss. Like I really feel like it's that powerful for me. Anyway, it works for me because I'm at my desk all day. Just walk. Oh, I mean, it worked for anybody. Again, you're burning, yeah. you're burning calories. Uh, I mean, that's right. one of the, like when I try. If I'm on vacation, um, because I usually also like, I'm, if I'm in a city, I like to walk around and see things. I'm not big on shopping or like going from restaurant to restaurant. So, I uh, so I end up just walking around and, you know, I might walk five or six hours in a day. And then it's also nice that, you know, that's, that's 1500, 2000 calories or so burned, which just means that it's easy for me then to, you know, if I, what I'll usually do is I'll skip breakfast. And then I'll eat a, a smaller lunch, just kind of get protein in. I'll do a lot of walking and then just eat whatever I want at dinner. And so it's nice to be able to do that and, and not really notice any difference in my body composition. So you can do the same thing when you're cutting. Uh, now you probably have to have something like that if you're going to do enough walking. That's the only issue is if you walk like two or three hours per week, I mean, it's going to help, but it, yeah, um, it's going to be pretty, it's not, it's only, you know, 600, a thousand calories when it takes it takes at least three to, let's say, close to 4,000 calories to, to burn a pound of fat. It could be a bit more depending on, I mean, there's, although 
there is about three thirty five hundred to 4,000 calories of energy in a pound of fat, you're not burning. When, when we're talking about calorie deficits, not all of those calories are coming directly from fat. So you, in reality, you have to burn a bit more. Research shows it's it could be as high as for some people, 7,000 calories just to lose a pound of fat. It's actually what it takes in terms of energy expenditure. Wow. Um, yeah. So, so what, what I, what I do myself when I'm cutting, um, if, if I'm going to be going hard on fat loss and just want to, you know, really want to get lean. And, uh, this is what I recommend is I'll do some, I'll do some high intensity stuff and then I'll supplement it with some walking. So I might do an hour and a half, two hours max of high intensity per week. And I'll do also a couple hours of walking per week. At the time it was last time I was doing this, I was walking my dogs. Now we have a new dog. Those dogs are no longer here. Um, so yeah, I'd go walk my dog and, and have a couple hours, uh, a week of that to, to just supplement the calorie expenditure. And, um, yeah, I'd say that's, that's kind of the flow chart of, uh, debugging weight loss plateaus. Good stuff. All right. We're going to open the giveaway right now. This is going to be for the first pack. This is a $214 pack. Uh, this is the bigger, leader, stronger pack. I got whey protein. They're two fat burners. Forge and Phoenix. Pulse, the pre-workout. Feels really good. It makes me feel like I am... Uh, it really feels like I'm ascending to a new dimension in all of this stuff. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not hyping this up. A lot of people report that with Pulse. Also, uh, try out their multivitamin and recharge. Their... Uh, recovery drink. So this is going to be $214. So exclamation mark points. If you want to see how many points you have, exclamation mark raffle followed by the number, throw it in there. We're going to do another question and then we're going to do this giveaway. And then we have one more giveaway after this for the 30 day thinner, leaner, stronger for the ladies. So preferably the first product for um, the men, second one for the ladies. We're not going to like actually like really check this. So you can go ahead and throw it in there. Men first, if you're a guy, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I'm gonna get banned. I'm gonna get banned for that because I you didn't are such a bigot. I can't. I, I I can't stand myself sometimes. But um, the uh, you're kind the, of you're the, kind of you're kind of a white. You should like fifty percent self loathing because you're fifty yeah. percent white, right? <laughs> right, fifty percent white, fifty percent Chinese. Yeah. Actually, yeah. you know, the truth I need, is, I'm, I'm supposed I'm, to hate myself entirely. <laughs> I hate every, every fiber of my being. You should. Absolutely. Yes. How, yes. how could you do that to everyone, Mike? My but, uh, ancestors were so <laughs> evil. So evil. But you know what? Uh, actually, the, there's an advantage for having the ladies go second because most people will blow their points on this first giveaway. Max 10,000 for the raffle, by the way, guys. But um, for the ladies one, we're not going to like actually like check. But if Because if you want to win it, if you're a guy, you want to win it and give it to like your wife, girlfriend, or just a friend, absolutely can do that too. It's just honor system here. So the next question uh, Mike is what's the biggest bottleneck or blockers that affect you and your team doing their jobs? Well, uh, that's a good question. Um, currently, uh, so there are a couple things. So we are understaffed. Um, we need a few more people ASAP, which we're working on. And so you have people who are wearing a couple of people who are wearing too many hats basically, and they're doing a good job of it. But what it means is uh, it makes for a more stressful work life. It makes for a bigger workload and it makes for, there are a number of things that are not getting done because they're stuck doing things that are important and need to get done. For, for the show to keep going, but that eats up all of their time. So then they don't have enough time to give to the more creative forward thinking things that are going to move the business ahead. And so I'd say personnel is, and that, that applies to me too. I mean, them, uh, there are things that I do where I'm like, I really shouldn't, should not be the person doing this. I really should. This is something that really should be delegated, uh, but I don't have anybody to delegate it to at the moment. So I'm going to do it kind of thing. Um, and then also... I would say we're, we could be better in the way of uh, systems and codification of, of jobs and working instead of just being in the machine and, and, and having blinders on and just kind of trying to bang out tasks every day and just keep the thing going, uh, working on the job and really looking at the system that is being used to do the job and, and constantly looking at how can this be improved? How can we make this more efficient? How can we make this more productive? How can we get more out of every unit of, of energy and, and money that goes into this little machine, right? And um, a good book to, to read on that is uh, The E-Myth by Michael Gerber. And that's what it's all about. And I agree 
that with his basic premise is that you want ideally you want a business that has that's comprised of extraordinary systems that can be run by ordinary people and that's not to that's not meant as a slight on anybody it's just a it's just looking at it that way versus a business that has ordinary or even worse systems that requires extraordinary people to even make it run and currently i'd say we're more the latter than the former. And that's not good. I mean, it's cool for people to go, yeah, I have a high work ethic and you know, I'm smart and I work hard to make things happen. And that's great. But from a business perspective, you want to have a business that doesn't require that, that can, you know, where you can hire people who are just good people. They're willing to work. Uh, and maybe they're, they're, they don't necessarily, they're not going to be the one to, to take something and build it up and make it into create something out of nothing. But if you give them something that's there and it's running, they can do a good job running it. And so I'd say those are the two main things that are holding us back right now. And um, where that's where both of those problems are particularly evident, I would say, is uh, in the in the marketing department um, and new customer acquisition in particular. So that's an area that I'm going to be more heavily involved in going forward. And, um, it needs, it just needs to be staffed up. The, the guy who's doing it right now is doing a good job, but one person can only do so much. And especially when you take Amazon, for example, Amazon to do a good job on Amazon we're at requires at least one full-time person, probably more than that, actually, probably at least two if not three full-time people to really, really maximize our potential on Amazon. And that's just Amazon. That's to say nothing of, of website uh, customers and website revenue, which is fairly substantial. Um, so again, given, given that we are understaffed and under systematized, we're doing quite well, but uh, those are the, the immediate obstacles that we're working to overcome. All right. Good stuff. And um, I forgot to mention in chat that exclamation mark shipping, this is an international giveaway. So uh, with a few exclusions, but we're going to close the giveaway in uh, just a minute. Mods, can we get one more question queued up after this next one? Uh, and again, exclamation mark points just to make sure your points actually entered. If too many people jam it in at the exact same time, uh, sometimes the bot misses it. So just make sure it actually chewed up your points. Um, let's do one more question. We'll close the first giveaway. So the next question is, what's the strategy and purpose behind your podcast? Due to the shorter episodes, feels very heavy on the ads and makes it hard to listen to. That's a good point, actually. I hadn't really thought about that. I mean, there's an ad. We do an ad before, and I think I end with an ad. I mean, I at least weird not to have anything. And the ads are pretty short. Like, it's usually just a one-minute pitch. Um, but assuming that that's also, we do have some shorter ones. Anyways, that's something to think about. I'm, I'm going to check that out. But uh, to, to answer the question, um, it's just a, it's another way to, to reach people, another way to educate. People. I already put a fair amount of work into researching and writing articles. So I was like, yeah, why not turn this content also into podcasts? And then I do some interviews with people, which is a nice way to meet interesting people and quote unquote network, I guess, which I don't do very much of at all. Um, because yeah, I'd rather just create things than uh, chase after people and to try to beg them to get on their podcast and whatever. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'd say there, there isn't much else to it other than I'm like, eh, people like it. It does well. It averages probably about four to 500,000 plays a month. It doesn't take me that much time to do. And I get a lot of good feedback on it. So, so fuck it. Why not? Right. Yeah. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Speaking of doing it live, <laughs> the great Bill O'Reilly, the great, the great one and only. All right. We're going to close the giveaway and we're going to announce the winner for this. We're going to do it together. So let me get some appropriate music going on here. You're not going to hear it, Mike, but it is intense. It is very intense music. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn the audio. Yeah, you can hear it. All right. So the winner and watch for it in chat. Watch what Gaines Bot Nation says. For the winner, the winner of the $214 pack, the 30-day Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, and also a, a shaker. We're throwing a shaker, too. The winner goes to... There it is. What? What? Where? Hookah 
Bill. It was Hookah Bill. Good job, Mike. Exactly. Hookah Bill. Congratulations. I'm looking at the chat. What am I looking for? Gamesbot Nation said, Hookah Bill, you have won. Please speak up in chat. So congratulations on that. Okay, well, so, give, give away uh, fail. Yeah, it's okay. It, it, this is not the first time it's happened. Oh, it just, it um, just, it just came through now for me. I just saw oh, it. Oh, really? The, the congrats, Hookah Bill. Is that the announce, announcement? Yes. Yeah, yeah that yes. just well, came now, through. Now everyone's saying congrats to Hookah Bill. Well, no, uh, I know. The, Bill. The, Kel, the Kelinator, uh, congrats, <laughs> Hookah Bill. I just saw that 10 seconds ago. She's not actually a bot. She may seem like it, but she's a mod. She's she's a real person, Mike. How can you, how could you say that she's a bot? <laughs> I'm I'm blaming Twitch, not her. Yeah, damn Twitch. But uh, Hookah Bill, do me a favor and uh, uh, DM me later, either on Twitch or in Discord, and we will uh, we'll get that out to you. So congrats, Hookah Bill. Um, we're gonna open the giveaway again. So exclamation mark points and uh, exclamation mark raffle to enter. This is gonna be for the 30 day love your body transformation honor system for the ladies or you intend to give it to a lady after you take a few scoops of their protein. Uh, Mike, real quick, your top three favorite flavors for the protein. My favorite flavors, um, potato cake and chocolate peanut butter. And I like, I like the vanilla casein a lot. If you mix it with uh, less water and stir it up, it kind of turns into a pudding and it's real yummy. And to that point, what's coming is we have a strawberry casein that is straight delicious. It tastes like a strawberry milkshake. We we're all just confused. And that was with that was with water. <laughs> with milk, it probably does literally taste like a strawberry milkshake. So I'm, I'm excited for it, actually. Very excited. The casein I, I pudding like the is yummy. Flavor. Have you tried that? No, I haven't. I mean, like it comes out like, thick like a milkshake, yeah. and that's fine with me. Yeah, yeah no, but if you use less day. water, it just makes it's good. You can eat your protein powder. Yeah. So um, the next question. All right, so the giveaway is open. It's going to make sure I got everything going correctly. Yep. Okay, so the giveaway is open. The next question is, what's the best suggestion or innovative idea your team has come up with lately? Um. Wow. Uh, <laughs> or see. just a general uh, good one that stands out that merging merging muscle for life although <laughs> i guess that that I, i'm gonna say that came from me but but already uh the, the guy who's running all of my marketing he was talking about this some time ago so i have to kind of give him credit and i kind of poo-pooed it at the time however i did have plans to build MFL out in its own right and like sell digital courses on MFL. And so I was thinking it made sense at that time to keep them separate. But even if I look back at my logic, nah, even that was just bad. Like it was, I should have, I should have just merged these sites years ago. Um, so that, that was, that was big. Um, uh, uh, let's see, Roman has, has come up with some great ideas for social media. So he's been helping just manage my social media schedule and make sure everything gets posted on time. And he has come up with some good ideas for types of posts and individual posts that have done really well. Um, let's see, Carson's coming up with some, some great ideas on the customer retention side of things. We have a loyalty program that's going to be rolling out. I think people are going to like that. We have subscription coming. He, Can you uh, give us a heads up on the loyalty program? I'm very interested in that now. No, no. no uh, damn it. Almost. Yeah, yeah. No, it's almost just going to be a, your, a standard, <laughs> standard, you know, point purchase deems for things type of setup. Um, but but yeah, it'll be cool. It'll be just another another reason to to purchase from the website as opposed to Amazon. Really, that's like that's the big game now with in e-commerce is how do you get people to buy from you and not Amazon? Um, so so that's been good. Um, I mean, it's every, everybody actually in their own right ha comes up with with good ideas and and good things, and that's something that we encourage. I mean, as part of our culture, is uh, that point of just knowing that we can all be doing our jobs better. And so it's important to take some time to reflect on what we're doing, reflect on our systems, so to speak, and just look for what are little ways that we can improve this. And then in some cases, maybe it's big ways, but minimally, if if you are do little things to to improve the the systems that you use in your job over time, it's it's the uh, it's like working out. Eventually you're jacked, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and the last question we're going to take today is, is then we're going to do the giveaway. The second giveaway is, do you have any advice for people that need to heavily restrict carbohydrate intake due to medical conditions? For example, timing for the few carbs uh, per day or supplements that would be useful? Uh, 
yeah, so timing can definitely work. Obviously, after workout, post workout is a is body is going to be very uh, your muscles in particular are going to be very sensitive to to carbs and to insulin and they're going to want to suck them up so that's that's something that's common like i've i've worked with people who have type 1 diabetes for example and that's a, a in, in a number of cases they needed to keep their carbs relatively low not like keto low but relatively low and so so yeah we would time um uh, post workout was was common a little bit of sometimes a little bit of carbs before the workout and then a large amount post workout and maybe not much otherwise uh, at least beyond vegetables and maybe a piece of fruit but like the the heavier carb foods were, were usually post workout um as far as supplements go uh, well i'd say let me just say in terms of amount it's okay if you need to eat less carbs it's not like you're screwed you can still do well um of course a uh, higher carbohydrate diet is more conducive to muscle and strength gain than a lower carbohydrate diet we know that but uh, don't let that be a determining factor. It's not a make break point at all. I mean, if you look at some of the newer research on keto and muscle gain, um, yes, you definitely can can gain muscle and strength on a keto diet. Uh, again, it's you're probably going to do better on a high carb diet, but you can do well on a keto diet. So uh, don't sweat it. As far as supplements go, berberine is a great supplement. Now, if you have a medical condition i wouldn't necessarily just start taking berberine i would talk to talk to your doctor first but berberine is a, is very very good at increasing insulin sensitivity which is going to help your body do better with carbs it's actually something that we tried to put into recharge and we are working on a new formulation curtis I mean, curtis has come up with a new formulation um i think nobody else yeah i mean he just he, he did a great job on it and nobody else had anything on like that was it. He, he just uh, said, here we go. Here's the new recharge. And we would love to put berberine in it, but it actually tastes like puke, literally like puke. <laughs> you drink anything with berberine, it tastes like you puked in your own mouth and you're swallowing it back down. So no berberine in, in the new recharge, but um, we probably will sell it as a standalone. That's something we're going to be coming out with. It'll probably be a next year thing. Some basics, uh, like I would like to have a ba I would like to have a vitamin D, for example, because while Triumph has 2,000 IUs, um, that's and that's a good baseline. Some people do need to take more, like me. I do need to take more, so I would like to have also, you know, a 5,000 IU capsule of 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 vitamin D. So then I can explain to people, hey, this kind of goes with Triumph. It doesn't mean you necessarily needed it, but uh, here's something that goes with Triumph. Berberine, right? It would be like just kind of goes with Recharge. We couldn't put it in it because it's so disgusting. But uh, here it is in capsule form if you if you want to get even more out of your post-workout meals, so to speak. So um, also uh, in terms of carbs, depending on the situation, more complex carbs are, are you're probably going to do better with. So sticking to uh, vegetables, um, fruits that are lower on the GI uh, index, uh, legumes are great. Um, and, you know, that, that may matter. For some people, it, it does difference in terms of how their body responds not not in terms of body composition but in terms of how they respond to like they eat a bunch of carbs do they feel like they're going to pass out or do they feel energized that can be a big difference between you know is it white bread versus like ezekiel bread it, it does make a difference for some you know um speaking of recharge something about recharge i don't know if you have other data points for this but I think it's the cortisolic acid. It really blunts my my uh, food coma. If I know yeah. I'm gonna get food coma from um, from a meal, it, it really makes a big di like a noticeable difference. Not always. If I do a Thanksgiving dinner, I'm fucked. No, you're but, dead. Yeah, yeah, so that's you, the whole you're, point. You're you eat until <laughs> you act. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, the, like, it, it it blunts the uh, uh, the food coma for me, and and uh, but. Um, I want to actually ask one more question. I lied. I lied to you. I said this is the last question. It's not. Uh, someone in chat with mods mystery reminded me. I know. First time on this and I'm just like, I lied. But my cellar casein versus calcium caseinate. I could not find a good explanation why calcium caseinate is so cheap and why it's maybe not the best idea. I remember reading it a long time ago, but I couldn't find it again. Enlighten us, please. Um, it's just the, when, when you look at it from like a molecular, is calcium caseinate and uh calcium caseinate's okay it's it's not like it's kind of like whey protein concentrate right if you're getting it from a good company and they're not uh see i don't want to get off on a tangent on, on on whey concentrates the thing with concentrate though is 
it can be up to about 80% protein by weight, but it could also be as low as like 20%, depending on the quality. And you don't, you just can't know that uh, by looking at a bottle. So calcium caseinate is in a similar boat where it's okay if you're getting it from a, from a company that you trust. It's not that it's a bad source of, of protein per se. It's just my seller is better and uh, it's, it's a higher quality form of casein. And um, in terms of, in terms of, there isn't much research uh, that that I could that we can we can look at to know whether um, using micellar is going to be better than calcium you know, over the long term. But uh, as far as like people's experiences go, um, there are people who find micellar is easier on their stomachs, for example, and so that's that's also something that even that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go with a whey isolate and have no concentrate is just for that point alone because I know especially with people who are having several scoops of protein powder a day that, and I've been there myself, actually, if I have more than three scoops or so of whey, um, mine doesn't, uh, I haven't, I mean, I haven't had more than three in a, in a while, but back in the day when I used to think I had to eat like 400 grams of protein per day, I'd have, I don't know, seriously, 400 grams, uh, like five or six scoops of protein powder a day. And it was on whey at that time. And my stomach would get upset. Like after the third or fourth scoop, my, I could feel my body like, no, please stop. And so some people have a similar experience with calcium caseinate, uh, but you know, um, I'd say it is a lower quality, cheaper form of protein, but that doesn't mean that it's complete garbage. It's not garbage in the way that collagen protein, it's not. So it's the affordability tier. <laughs> it is. It's, it's yeah, exactly. And so, you know, take talk. So we will do a whey concentrate. It's going to be a high quality whey concentrate, but I have to, if I want to be able to sell people, uh, you know, a, a $25 uh, bottle of protein, it has to be whey concentrate. It can't be whey isolate. Uh, I mean, when I first launched with whey plus, it was costing me $22 a bottle. If I remember correctly, uh, my cost. And so, yeah, that has come down, but it's still very expensive for me to produce. The margins are still bad on, on, mm. on it. And it would be so bad that I wouldn't even be able to do it if, if, uh, with the economy line. So again, and, and if we do a casein, it'll, yeah, I mean, it would have to be a calcium caseinate again to, to make it more affordable. Um, and, but, um, uh, you know, when it comes to the marketing, these things are going to be transparent. I'm not going to be saying that the calcium casein is everything that the micellar is. Um, no, but it's going to be, I'll get the highest quality calcium caseinate that I could find. And it's going to be naturally sweetened and naturally flavored. No artificial junk. We're going to stick to that despite the costs. That's expensive. Uh, in some cases, the flavor systems alone coming up to like 4 to $5 a bottle on some of these products. Wow. That's just the flavoring. If I were to go artificial, I could cut that down to 50 cents to a dollar, like in those cases, right? So, you know, we're paying a premium, but I believe in it. I still stand by that. I think that while artificial sweeteners are not as bad as many people would have us believe, if you take the average person who is using quite a few supplements uh, every day, and maybe they're also drinking some diet soda, maybe they're chewing some gum, you could get up to like eight plus servings of sucralose or ACE-K um, or aspartame a day. And that every single day, uh, is, it's not going to do good things for you. That's for sure. It is not going to help your gut, for example, doing that every day, seven days a week. And so, uh, I still want to stick to that. So, um, anyway, that's, that's the, that's, that's the, my, uh, my, my pitch, my spiel. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with that though. Like it's, it's a serving, like a diet soda here and there, not a big deal, but if you eat every day, multiple of these, it does add up. Yeah. Yeah. So not just multiple, but again, like, you know, we're talking about pre-workout, maybe even an intro taste, right. And then they're having a post-workout, having several, several servings of, uh, of protein uh, powder a day. And that's just like, that's kind of a basic supplementation routine. Some people might might also be adding other things on top of that. Yeah. All right, we're gonna close the giveaway. It's the last chance, we'll give it 20 seconds. Um, I will say that uh, for people in chat, the audio cutting out is on my end. My computer is in some ways too potato to handle the greatness of Mike, but uh, it's, it's, it is lagging out. It's not, it's, yeah, those guns, those gains. 
but it's uh, it, it's on my end, which is why we're also doing the audio on Zencaster. So I'm glad we have that there. And, and Mike, I hope you don't mind if I get a copy of that. So I'm going to I'm going to cut out this audio and then overlay that due to all the, the cutting out. So we're actually a fundraiser right now for my second computer because it's just I'm running is it, my setup here is too crazy. I have like eight monitors and five webcams running all the time. So it, it's a lot of bandwidth on this PC. So let's give, close the giveaway. Give Tom your money. That's, that's, Thank you. That was very tactfully said. <laughs> all right. He it needs is, it more than you. He will do better. What's, what's sad is the mic just cut out as you said that. <laughs> I said I said that that Tom is going to do better things with your Make the right is, choice. Give it to him. This is so hilarious. It keeps cutting at that point, but they said just <laughs> donate and donate a lot. That's what uh, words from Mike. But we got one last quick one. Can we get a flex from Mike? Is that possible? Just, is that already I, like I just, nah? I just, I just did. There we go. Another one. Oh. And that's that, that's that's my post. Uh, I haven't worked out in a few days, so you know I'm kind of unpumped right now because of this damn cold. Yeah, it sucks. But lighting and angles—that's we know it's all about lighting and angles. That's true, and and then shrinking images down. You know, the smaller the image is, the more jacked you look. Oh, that's right, because like you're more zoomed in. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. Okay. All right. Here we go. The giveaway for the 30-day Love Your Body transformation. Valued at $186 plus a shaker bottle. Congratulations. Goes to, here it is, here it is, Mike. Watch for it. I'm staring at the chat right now. Gamesbot Nation just said, Moto Pink 23. Just the answer is Moto oh, Pink 23. There it is. Just Moto say, Moto Pink 23. Congrats. Just came through. Moto congrats, Moto Pink, Pink 23. 23. Congrats. There it is. So get some air horns. Congratulations, <laughs> Moto Pink. Some air horns for you there. I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching the chat. Yeah. You win. So she's very happy. She got it. I actually understand. I don't think I've ever won anything ever. So, Mike, do you do you want to win something here? You, you can <laughs> win. You can win some protein no, but bars. You just ruined it. You just. <laughs> yeah, it's it's artificial now. Like the sweeteners and. Yep, the other pre-workouts, the competitor, yeah, the competitor pre-workouts. Like, it's like winning. It's like winning some. Immediate. God, this mic is. It keeps cutting out, but I'm glad at least we got Zencaster because that is so critical. It's not your end. It's definitely. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I can tell my PC is taxed right now. Um, it is it, it's been accumulating throughout the entire stream, and I can tell. I'm just like the entire time, just like I'm reading his lips. I think I know what he's saying because I, I I know enough <laughs> what he's saying before. So. Um, Sorry your about computer, that. Guys. Your computer needs some trend, man. It really does. It needs to trend harder, you know? It's got to eat cleaner. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay, this is going to be it for real. Um, we're off a of front page. Front page ended. Uh, we're going to say goodbye to Mike now. Everyone chat if you could please spam goodbye to Mike or, or some sort of uh, uh, goodbye emote, whatever it is you want to spam. And don't forget, exclamation mark Legion. If you want to help support the stream at no cost to you, please consider hashtag sponsored. Whoa. Uh, use the code TOM10 for 10% off. And it helps support the stream. And it keeps the giveaways going on this stream. The reason why I have these giveaways uh, every week on Wednesday mornings is because you guys are using this code. So thank you for that. They're all they're all saying goodbye now, Mike. Everyone's One last so goodbye nice. for them. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.